Okay, so hopefully you've already watched the previous video that talks about the theory behind how you find the sum of, of the areas of all the different rectangles. That formula we're going to be using here. So we're working with Riemann sums here. So we want to find the formula for the Riemann sum obtained by dividing the interval AB into n equal subintervals. We're going to do that first. And so the formula that I talked about in the previous video for delta x is b minus a over n. So we're going to do that here. The a is 0 and your b is 3. So we're going to do 3 minus 0 over n, which means that 3 over n is your delta x. Now that we have that, we need to find the ck. So we're using a k. In this case, I had i in the video, but again, you can use either one of those. And the formula for ck is a plus delta x times k. So the a here is 0. And my delta x is 3 over n, and then I'm multiplying this by k. So if I simplify that, my ck is equal to 3k over n. And so now I have these two things complete. So these kind of problems, you always want to do these two things first before you put it into the main formula. The main formula that I mentioned before in the previous video is you're taking the limit as n goes to infinity. n represents the number of rectangles that you have of the summation k equals 1 to n of f of ck times delta x. You're basically saying we're, to, we're going to take an infinite number of rectangles and we're going to add them all together. This is your uh, length and width of each of those. So for specifically what uh, the problem I have here, I have my ck. I need to put that into here, which means that in the next step I'm going to do limit n goes to infinity. I have the summation, k equals 1 to n, and I have f of 3k over n, and then times delta x, which we know that already, that's 3 over n. So now I can put in uh, those. So this would be a formula that you can use uh, to get the Riemann sums would be this one. And of course we can go further with that. We can uh, f of 3k over n. What that means is you got to put 3k over n in place of the x in this formula. So let's do that next. We're going to limit as n goes to infinity. Summation k equals 1 to n. And then I'm going to do 1 plus 3k over n. That's got to be squared, top and bottom. And then I'm multiplying this by 3 over n. So at this point, what you can do is you can take the 3 over n and you can put it on the outside of the summation. So we're going to do limit n goes to infinity, 3 over n. Now you don't have to do this step. You could keep it inside, but it might make things easier if you move it on the outside. Then we have to just deal with what's inside the summation. So we're going to do k equals 1 to n, 1 plus, this will be 9k squared over n squared when we uh, distribute the top and bottom of the square there. Now that we have this complete, what we're going to do next is we're going to separate this limit into two separate ones. So we're going to do limit n goes to infinity. We have the 3 over n. And then in brackets, what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate uh, each of these. So each of these I'm going to multiply out. Uh, I'll do a, s a summation k equals 1 to n of 1 plus summation k equals 1 to n of 9k squared over n squared. So I did, I separated that in two different things. What you can do with this part is you can go further with it. You can do 3 over n on the outside and then this part summation k k equals 1 to n of 1 plus. I'm going to take everything on the outside of this that's not a k because I want to leave this alone because that way I'm going to apply the summation formula to this later. So the idea here is you want to move everything out and keep these summations by themselves and that way you can put the special summation formulas in for each one and that's what we're going to do up here. So I'm going to erase some of this, so hopefully you have this already. And we're going to move this part up. Okay, so this part here, I'm now going to put in some summation formulas in it. So I do limit k, or n, rather, n goes to infinity. And then I have 3 over n. 
Inside, I'm going to use the summation formulas for each. So in this case, I have a 1 here, and that's being multiplied by n. So I'm going to get an n for that, because that formula says that you, if you have a c here, you're going to do c times n. That's the formula that we're using that we talked about before in the previous video. Then this part, I have 9 over n squared, but then I'm going to put in the formula for this. So k equals 1 to n of k squared. Now there's a couple different forms that I gave you. There's the uh, factored form and then there's expanded form. You probably want to use the expanded form here because you have to expand it out eventually anyway to find the limit. Okay, so this has a 6 in the bottom and then on top we have 2n cubed. Let me show you I get the right one here and you have 3n squared plus n. So that's our special formula that we're going to use for that one. Now that we have this complete, what we're going to do next is we need to multiply in each of these. So I want to now multiply uh, in each of these. Now you could actually, what I want to do first, let me do this first, let me do a simplifying step. Don't want to get ahead of myself here. Okay, so I divided each of these um, by three and then now once I get to that, what I'll do is I'm going to multiply this out and get it to be multiply these two fractions together. So I still have the n here and then the rest of it I'm going to multiply the top by 3 all the way across there. So I'm going to get 6n cubed plus 9n squared and then plus 3n. All this is being divided by that'll be a 2n squared there when I bring that part over. Okay so now that I have this complete what we're going to do next is Finally, we're at the point where we can distribute the 3 over n uh, into that, so we'll do that next. Okay, so then we'll do 3, three over n times n. You're going to get 3 inside, so the limit as n goes to infinity, we get 3. Okay, and then we're going to do the, the, uh, the multiply the rest of this out. And so next thing we'll do is we'll do 3, three over n times all the ones inside there. Okay, so I'll get 18n cubed plus 27n squared plus 9n across the top there. So 3 over n I'm multiplying by this fraction here. And then the bottom, I have n times n squared. That's 2n cubed I get. Okay, so now that I have that complete, I'm now ready to start doing some simplifying and I can apply the limit to each one. So I'm going to take everything on top divided by 2n cubed. When I do that, 18 over 2 is 9, and then when I do this part, 27 over 2, there'll be an n on the bottom down below there, and then I get 9 over 2n squared in the end. And then when I apply the limit, this goes back to what we talked about, we did infinite limits. Whenever you have a number over something like that, these are all going to go to 0 which means that you get 3 plus 9 plus 0 plus 0. Your final answer for this one is going to be 12. So 12 would be the exact limit. We took the limit of the sums as n goes to infinity and we calculated the area under the curve. So this is the exact area for this function.